Okay, welcome to the uh, the, the second and uh, last part of uh, this two-part tutorial. Um, in this section of this tutorial, we're going to be firstly looking at uh, unwrapping the crate that we've uh, we've just finished modelling. Um, and what we'll basically, the way we'll basically be doing that is we'll be selecting or finding the original slat, which is here somewhere, that one there. We'll be unwrapping our slat. I'm wrapping our crate as separate objects, and then we'll be uh, attaching all of these objects together, uh, and then uh, aligning the UVs uh, for each object, exporting that into Photoshop, which I have open here, uh, and then we will be going to Google Images, grabbing some uh, some sample images that we can put onto these crates in Photoshop to create uh, a material that we can then apply back into 3ds Max. So, let's start. The first thing that we need to do really is find the original slat. Now if in the previous tutorial you followed my instruction and gave it uh, a unique name, so slat1, it should be pretty easy to find. Now rather than go by and click each one, which can be a time consuming process, you can navigate to the select by name option, which is in the top left hand corner. If we click on that, all of the objects that are in the scene, and you'll notice that I haven't, I've got, I have 15 boxes. <laughs> Where are they? Well, they're gone now. You'll notice that I have my crate, I have slat 1, slat 002, 003, etc, etc. So, from this point of view, it's pretty easy to, to tell which, which is the original. Goodbye, Vast. It's pretty, it's pretty obvious to see which one's the original. So, I'm going to double click on this. And it should select it. Now, another way of proving that this is not a reference is by looking uh, at the right hand side under the modifier list. Because where it says edit poly and box, uh, we know that this is the original slat. If I go ahead and select the one to the left of this, you'll notice that I have two grey bars that are selectable uh, above my edit poly. Now we know that this is uh, a, a reference that has been done second uh, and you know the ones that we did later on will have more bars once we did will have less, etc, etc. This has only got one. So we know that this is the first, this is the original. This was the first one that we did. Second, third, fourth, uh, and fifth and sixth, etc, etc. I think you know how it works. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and select my original. Now, <clears throat> as with all primitives and with all edited shapes, in order for us to change the state, like adding an unwrap and things like that, we do have to come to the modifier list. So what we're going to do, click on Modify List, and we're going to press U on the keyboard. And the modifier we're looking for <coughs> is Unwrap UVW. And we're just going to left click it and it should hopefully appear in our stack. The second step is to hide all other objects in the scene except the one that we want. Now this is optional, you don't have to do this, but I find it's much easier um, to focus on a specific section of a model if we can hide the others. Now to do that, we need to right click on the object and we need to move our mouse to an object that says hide unselected. And what this is going to do is hide all of the objects that we don't currently have selected. So if I, if I click this button now. You'll notice that I'm just left with my stack, with my uh, my slat, okay? And I can deselect this and it stays visible, so feel free, it doesn't matter if you deselect it, it's not a problem. To, to re-show uh, everything, if you like, to hide or to unhide selected, we're going to right click anywhere in the scene, doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be on the object, and we're basically going to click on unhide all. And that will bring everything back, okay? So just get used to hiding the objects that you want uh, and then unhiding all. And it, it allows you to focus uh, more on, on the objects that you're creating. Oh, there we go. So let me uh, hide unselected. So as with, uh, as with uh, Edit Poly, you'll notice that within the unwrap selection, uh, we have three selection types. Now, if we come back to Edit Poly, don't worry about this, just to show you, we have five selection types. Within unwrap, we only have uh, three. And the element that we were talking about earlier uh, is basically a toggle on and off box. But of course, we can't select that until we've selected uh, a selection. Now, this slat is made up of three polygons. okay? Uh, and, and typically, when we unwrap, what we want to do is select polygons rather than edges or vertices or anything like that. We, we will add, we will use these later on. 
when we uh, are, are in the editor but for now we're going to select polygon uh, and you'll notice if I select faces now not only do I they change color they turn red as is normal with 3ds max I also get a projection now what 3ds max is doing is assigning a projection to the polygons that I select and it basically uh, creates an average so if I if I press Control A and select them all, can you see how that projection changes a touch? If I deselect them all, there is no projection type. The default is on the floor. Okay. So what we're going to do is press Control A, and on the right hand side, we're going to scroll down. Now the, there are ways of doing this. If you select the black bar and push down, you can do that, or you can grab gray space and you can slide up. It's completely up to you. It's your preference. Now, to show you what we're actually what's actually happening here, I'm going to open up the, uh, the UV editor. And to do this, we can uh, scroll back up again. And where it says edit UVs, we can open UV editor. Okay. Now, if I deselect everything, you'll notice that my entire object, for the most part, um, it has been cramped into this little box. All right. And, you'll, and you can kind of see how uh, this default projection is working. Now, if we scroll down again. And we click on the planar map. You can kind of see how that changes. This changes the shape within the the unwrap, and also within the uh, perspective viewport and any other viewport. You'll notice how the projection type changes. Now, hopefully, you can see why this is a bad projection type. Okay, the idea of using projection types is to capture as much uh, of the flat polygon space as we can. And what that means is we have to cycle through these align options until we get uh, a decent uh, representation of this 3D object. So normally, the first thing we do, click align X, and we're going to cycle through these. So if X isn't uh, the right one for you, then cycle through them until you end up with uh, the box that we ended up with at the beginning. So we're going to click X, and you'll notice that for me that's not quite right. This is, it's almost exactly the same. So press Y, and uh, this is what I'm looking for. All right. So in your scene, just keep cycling through until you get this box. And this is this is what we're looking for. And you can see how in the UV space now under Reddit UVWs, you can kind of see where that's changed. You can see how this now makes more sense. Now, before we can edit anything in here, we have to just deselect this uh, projection type. OK, because as you can see, I've got my move and selected sub object. Uh, enabled and all I'm doing is drawing squares I can't I'm just marking I can't actually move now some people say this is a bug uh, other people say that it's just uh, a feature uh, I person doesn't really matter just get into the habit of deselecting this the projection type will be saved so as soon as that projection type is 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 done um, it, it's saved the last the last option essentially is the one that's uh, kept so we deselect Flana just by clicking on it again just one left click and you'll notice that the projection type stays the same and also when we hover over our new shape uh, we get a cursor we get a new icon and what this means is we can now move this around now uh, I have friends to do this slightly differently and again I've seen video tutorials to do this differently um, if you're colorblind or you have trouble seeing this wireframe with the checkers feel free to just drag it off the space now in this tutorial I'm going to insist well not insist but suggest that we do move it off the grid because we're going to unwrap two objects separately in exactly the same way that we're going to do do these all right now if we attach these objects after we've unwrapped them we're going to essentially have two unwraps on the same space and depending on how the other unwrap goes that can get quite uh, can get quite crowded it can be very difficult to separate them up especially if you've got four or five different objects now we're only going to have two so for, for now it's just good habit just to move it off the grid okay um, uh, and in the lessons at a college I teach uh, I, I call this moving it off the barbecue okay so we're going to move that off the grid so it is diagonal by default now when we're painting materials on this it is always going to be easier if we have a flat object okay now remember if you if you have disabled angle snaps um, then obviously for you it's gonna it might take a little longer just to get that 45 correct um, just as a reminder to enable angle snaps it's the top toolbar and it's the magnet with the uh, 
the angle on it. So we're going to turn that on, and angle snaps works within the UV editor. And we're just going to leave it like that for now. Now, you'll notice if I deselect my polygons here, the only one I can see is this front facing polygon. And the reason for that is the projection type is looking at the object from this viewport. Okay, so I'll just move this out of the way for a second. This is, this is what's happening. So 3ds Max is using the projection type on the Y axis, which is the one we're looking at now, uh, and it's only going to show you this face. And obviously that isn't going to work particularly well because we need these faces too. We need to be able to paint on those. And as a general rule in 3D, if you can't see it, and the player is never going to see it, uh, delete it. That tends to be the rule I live by. There are, there are circumstances where uh, that doesn't apply. But what you have to realize here is just because I can't see it in this viewport does not mean the player isn't going to be able to see it when he's running around or when he's uh, jumping on top of it or pushing it or throwing it or shooting it, etc. So when we're, when we're designing these objects and unwrapping them, we really have to think about the experience within that game. Okay? Um, and some people are going to watch this and say, oh, you know, it's a pointless exercise. It's just a crate, etc. No one's going to really pay that much attention. And you're right. Absolutely right. They're probably not going to pay that much attention. But as a new modeler, it's it's a really good idea to start thinking when you're modeling about these things. Thinking about, is the player going to see it from this angle? Is the player going to uh, see these polygons? Okay. So we have to make these visible in UV space somehow. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen is we just end up with uh, stretched material here that will look horrible. Okay. Now... To do that, we need to do something called relaxing. Now, relaxing uh, is a tool that we can access by in the UV editor, okay? And if you don't have the UV editor open, um, then all you need to do is come back to the Unwrap UVW, where it says Edit UVs, okay? So if you're at the top, you should hopefully be able to see it. You want to click on Open UV Editor, and it should pop up this, this menu. Um, and what we want to do is make sure that we've selected that entire shape. We want all of the polygons selected. Okay, anything that is not selected will not be relaxed. So we're going to go to Tools. We're going to go to Relax, which is the second from the bottom. And we should get a dialog box pop up. Now, there are circumstances where we're going to relax by edge angles, okay? But today, we're going to be looking at face angles or polygon angles. If you're using 3ds Max 2014, okay, uh, Everything that was face in 2013 and previously has been changed to polygon, okay? So where it applies, I will be saying face angles and polygon angles. So for you, it's face angles if you're 2013 or beyond, or sorry, before. And if you're 2014 plus, then it will be polygon angles. So we're just going to click on that. And you notice when I click on that, uh, it doesn't automatically relax it. It's just allowing me to select uh, a preset, essentially. Now beneath this, we have a selection of options. Now, iterations basically uh, is, how, is how long that relax is going to last for, okay, before the next two stop. The amount is essentially how, 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 how violent that unwrap process is going to be. So are we going to snap these planes out, or are we going to allow them uh, to come out naturally or slower and stretch basically uh, is when sometimes when you unwrap everything kind of like collapses in on itself um, increasing the stretch can be a really good way of uh, unstre unraveling that so that you can uh, you know uh, make more sense of the unwrap now luckily for us it's just it's literally three polygons so this is a really easy unwrap a really easy relax so we don't have to do anything other than just relax by polygon angles once we've done this we're going to click on start relax and you'll notice, hopefully, if you've got this part right, that I now have access to the, the next the next, uh, next polygons. And you'll notice that my start relax has automatically stopped. Okay, And this is because the iteration is at 100. If I change this to, to 1000, when I start relax, you'll notice that that lasts for a little bit longer. All right, so this is the length of time before it automatically stops. 100,000 again will start relax, etc. It gives us a lot longer before it stops. Okay, but if you do want to stop relax, literally just click on stop and it will, will end. Well, now we're done with this, we're going to get rid of the relax tool because we're not going to use that again for this particular object. But we will be revisiting that for the cube later. So now we have this uh, unwrapped.
Now that's it for the unwrapping of the slats. Now, just unwrapping it isn't necessarily uh, a good indication of how well materials are going to tile across these edges. We need to be able to apply material to this uh, object that will show us uh, how the tiling is happening across these edges. So for the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this uh, UV editor. And you'll notice when I minimize it, it becomes a tab at the bottom of the screen. Okay. So if you uh, can't access it for any reason, make sure you have a look at the bottom of the screen. And just, again, same as normal, just click maximize or restore to uh, re you know, bring this window back. So I'm going to minimize it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a checker material to this. Okay, a black and white material that is going to uh, tile along this uh, object and it's going to show me uh, across these edges how the tiling is going to happen. So to do that I need to I need to go to the material editor. Now there are two ways of doing this. The first one is by pressing M. Okay, if I press M uh, I get a material editor. Or what I can do if you don't like hotkeys um, is you can scroll up to where it says material editor and we can just left click there. Um, and you're greeted with, uh, if, you're, if you're on 2014+, plus, uh, 2013 previously, you, you're not going to be greeted with the same one. Um, but this is the Slate Material Editor. Okay. Now, we, there will be tutorials in the future where we look at using this. And this, this particular Material Editor is excellent for um, layering on uh, different types of materials. So we're going to have a base UV map, plus as well, if you want dirt layers and stuff like that. This is a really nice node-based way of, of mixing different materials. But to begin with, we just want a basic material sphere. So to enable that, we're going to come over to modes, left click, and we, what we want is the compact material editor. And this is the one that most people are used to. 2013, uh, 3ds max and previously uh, defaulted to this whereas the new one defaults to the slate so what we're going to do is we're going to select one of these uh, texture spheres okay and where it says zero one default I'm just going to change this okay uh, to tile to tile underscore test um, and again same as when we were name, naming our objects it's a good idea to get into the habit of naming these materials okay next section the next part is we're going to come down to where it says diffuse okay now, for anyone that doesn't know, diffuse is basic, uh, basic color. It's 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 the color map, if you like. Now, to get a checker material, we have to click on the box next to where it says diffuse. Because if we click on the color, we essentially we get a lot of different RGB values that allow us to change uh, the, the basic color of the box or the sphere um, uh, and the material. But what we want is that checker. So we're going to apply a map. We're going to come to none. Click on that. And you'll notice that the fourth one down says checker. We're just going to double click on that. And feel free to just drag and drop that texture onto your slat. Now you'll notice that the entire object turns grey. So to enable this uh, material in the viewport, we have to click this button here. Now this is the show shader material in viewport button. And if it's not on, your material will just appear as grey. Now if you're doing this on a laptop or, or on a machine that's particularly old, um, being able to turn this on and off is actually useful for you because it means the 3ds max will probably run better if you've got it off etc so it's a nice optimizer i mean it doesn't matter for most people but that's why it's there now we're going to turn it on now you notice that uh, the tiling actually looks okay but you know i, I want to see more I, I don't want to just see this i want to see smaller squares I want, I want to be able to really test the boundaries of my of my object so what we're going to do is come to tiling and I'm going to change that to 10 by 10, okay? And you'll notice that I get a nice checker pattern here. Now, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, if you are using 3ds Max design and you're following this tutorial, please make sure if you followed the first steps and you unticked the uh, real world scale within Edit Poly, you're also going to need to make sure that you uncheck this as well, okay? So for you, that will be on, and what we want to do is get rid of it and make sure that the tiling is 10 by 10. Now, providing that's OK, um, we can close uh, the material editor. Now, if you prefer uh, different colors to black and white, then feel free to change them down here. OK, so you can have red and blue, or you can have any color that, that you really fancy. OK, so I'm going to have red and blue because uh, I'm colorblind. So it makes it quite easy for me to tell between the two.
I'm going to close the material editor and I'm just going to alt and middle click around my object and you can see how uh, the tiling is, is is good okay so being able to paint on that is fine we, that, we're not going to have a problem so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to unhide all of the other objects because that's it for the unwrapping of this uh, the slap so we're going to right click unhide all and you'll notice that uh, everything comes back now what we're going to do is we're going to select our cube if you like all right so i'm going to get rid of the unwrap just deselect that and we're now going to unwrap the cube um and to prove that the slats have all been unwrapped um what i'll do is i'm going to hide the cube select all of those slats and i'm going to apply the same checker material to all of them and you'll notice how they are all uh sharing that same material okay so let's unhide all uh select the cube and hide unselected so that we can focus in on this. Now to, to unwrap the, the crate itself, the actual box, is slightly harder. Um, and but, but, but the beginning process is exactly the same. So we're going to come to the modifier list, we're going to press U uh, so that we get our unwrap and we're going to select the polygon again. Now rather than group select areas, what we're going to do is we're going to select the central polygon from each of these horizontal sections okay so if i zoom out and show you the top and the bottom central polygons should be unselected the ones that are in the center should be selected now i'm going to grow twice i'm going to grow my selection you'll notice that two clicks gives me my full central selection if you like so the the top and the bottom are completely unselected but i've selected that entire central section if you have to click grow more than twice um you have an, a slight issue and you need to have a look into the edge edges here and see if you have extra ones. If you have extra ones uh, this side of that edge, then continue to grow. You should hopefully be okay. If you have extra edges this side or you have hashes on your um, polygon in the center, what you need to do is you need to return to the, uh, the first tutorial and just redo the inset and extrusion on that cube because what you've done is you've perhaps inserted too much or you've extruded one too many times etc now when we've selected the central column if you like of this box we need to apply a projection map okay so you're going to notice that the basic technique for unwrapping most of the objects is, is very similar we're going to make a selection we're going to apply a projection and then we're going to edit that within the uh, the unwrap uv map and that's exactly the same process for all objects now, rather than use planar at this point, we're going to use something called cylindrical. Now, within 3D, the only difference between uh, a cube and a cylinder are the number of vertical edges. That's literally the only difference. Okay. Now, we're going to click on cylindrical map, and you'll notice that my map appears slightly above where it needs to be. Uh, but we're going to go through the same process again. So, what we want is to align that cylindrical axis so that the top of the cylinder is facing our non-selected top and the bottom of that cylinder is facing the non-selected bottom okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press R to select scale and I'm just going to scale the cylinder outside of that cube I'm then going to press W and I'm just going to centralize that now it doesn't really make much difference but it's a good idea just to get into the habit of making sure that the object is well inside the cylindrical projection map and this just mitigates any bugs that might happen or any kind of really annoying UV glitches that, that, that you could get okay so it's just a good habit and same as before we're gonna deselect the projection type remember because if we open up the uh, the unwrap uh, it's it's we can't edit it until that projection is gone so we're gonna get rid of that we're gonna scroll up to the top and we're gonna open the UV editor and you'll notice that we're greeted with what looks like uh, a squashed up uh, cube essentially now Hopefully, you'll, you will understand what's going to happen next uh, as when we, when we used to do nets for objects. We're going to create exactly the same kind of nets. You used to have like a long strut in the middle and you used to have top and the bottom either side. Now, before we relax this object, we need to do something called welding. Now, welding uh, basically enables us to connect two vertices together. And I'm going to show you now why we need to do that. So if I click on tools and relax, Polygon angles, obviously, 
and we're going to leave the other three options the same. I'm going to click on Start Relax. You'll notice how the end of my object sprays out. Okay, I have edges all over the place. Now this is uh, an issue. We can leave it like that, um, but the problem is to paint this you're going to have to be incredibly accurate. Um, and Accuracy takes time and we want to be quick. We want to do this you know, fast. So I'm just going to control Z back to the state we were in. And I'm going to go to tools, world selected, and that's going to bring my edges in. Now if I relax again, same as before, polygon angles slash face angles, start relax, you'll notice now that those edges have been welded. But we do still have an issue. On the left hand side of our unwrap, we have two extra polygons. Whereas on the right hand side we have too few. Now we have to break these off somehow and move them over to this end. So to do that we have to use a tool called break. We're going to go to tools, we're going to click break and once you've done that you should be able to move these polygons off of that end and we're just going to move over to here. Now if you want to pan in this viewport or in the, the editor just middle click Okay, if you middle click you should uh, get the hand. Um, and you can also, where it says pan view there, you can just click the, uh, the hand there. All right. Now we're just going to uh, align this somewhere near this object. Now what we want to do is attach this edge to this one. Uh, and rather than select vertices and get those points together ourselves, we're going to cheat. We're going to do it the easy way. We're going to select edge. We're going to select the edge uh, of our long selection of cubes. Okay, so this one, not this one. We're going to go to Tools, and we're going to use something called Stitch Selected. Okay, and what it should do is move this to this edge. And you also get a, uh, a dialog box pop up here. Now, for the most part, we're going to keep all of these the same. So feel free to just click OK. For the next part, we are going to have to uh, connect these vertices together. So we're going to come over to the Vertices Selection tool, Vertex. And you notice that I get white dots now. If I zoom in using the wall mouse, you'll notice that I get some dots appear. If I select them, they turn red. Now, when I select a vertice, you'll notice that this one turns blue. And what ha what's happening here is these are meant to be together. Okay, These are supposed to be connected. And any vertice I select should hopefully have another counterpart. And you'll also notice that I have green lines in here. Now, green lines within UV space basically indicates uh, a seam. So this is basically where the material stops and then starts again. And what we don't want is a seam within our unwrap. We want it all on the outside. So to connect these together, we're going to go to Tools. And we want something called Target World. So if we click Target World, it stays active. And you'll notice now if I click on a, a vertice, I get a different icon. So I'm going to now left click hold that left click and drag it onto the blue one okay and you notice that it uh, snaps on top and the green line now goes and just because I don't like seeing edges cross over I'm going to do the same thing again but this time I'm going to select it and I'm just going to drag it up I'm not going to connect it to anything I'm just going to move it so that these edges aren't crossed over we're then going to do the same for this top edge okay and we're going to leave it like that I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and we'll do the same again Okay, so that's basically it. The last thing we have to do is relax again. And what relax is going to do is basically average out each of these polygons uh, into UV space. It's going to give them the correct amount of space as per the, the, the amount of space it takes up in real time or in, 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 in perspective viewport. So again, select the whole thing, tools, relax, and we're going to do face angles or polygon angles. Start relax you notice it just snaps back straight there. We can stop, relax, close that dialog box, and we're going to leave uh, this section of the cube here. Okay. Now remember, when we unwrapped the slats, okay, we positioned it up here. When we attach the slats to this cube, the slat unwrap is going to appear up here. So what we don't want is to put that there, otherwise it's going to be a muddle. So we're just going to separate those out. The next step is to select the top and the bottom of this cube. Now, it, it, we can, if you want, select um, the top and the bottom faces and click Grow twice. But that takes time. So instead what we're going to do is select everything that's left in the, uh, in the grid here. 
And you notice that the only thing left to unwrap is the top and bottom parts of my cube. I'm going to click Planar. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down. My projection type is Planar. And you'll notice that my projection type is correct. But what we want to do is make sure that it's normalized accurately. So again, same thing. We're going to normalize or we're going to assign uh, uh, an align to that. And you'll notice that now Z for me is correct. But this is what we're looking for. Okay, that's the kind of thing you want. Now, before we can edit this again, we have to deselect Planar Map. We have to come back into here. And again, I'm going to drag and drop these off of there. All right, now this is what we're looking for. We want this. Now, same as with the slats, the problem we have here is that we don't, we can't see these areas. Okay, you'll notice when I select them in the perspective viewport, um, they appear here too. But we can't actually see them. So before we do that, we need to uh, relax these. But before we can relax, we have to separate the top and the bottom parts of this box. The easiest way of doing that is with the polygon tool selected, we're going to come to the right of that and select UV element. And it should hopefully have a tick in that box. We're then going to click, literally just click on the top here. You should select an entire object and we're going to drag and drop it off. And you'll notice that each part of that unwrap becomes its own separate sub-object within the, uh, the, the edit UVs menu. Now, because of the way that we've unwrapped this, we've applied a planar projection type from the top to the z-axis. So we've looked at it from the top like this. Okay, this is how 3ds Max has unwrapped it for us. And this becomes obvious because we, we now can't see or have very limited access of these, uh, the inner polygons of here. Okay. But what that does mean is that 3ds Max uh, and the unwrap tool has basically unwrapped this one inside out or back to front if you like. So the back faces of this have been unwrapped. Now for us to put this right, we had, it's a really useful tool. Um, and again, it's a good idea to get into the habit of using it before we finalize unwraps. Uh, and it's called Select Inverted Faces. Now if we go to the Select tool, and we click on Inverted Polygons, or Faces if you're 2013 previous, you'll notice that one of my entire squares turns red. Uh, this is the bottom of my cube. Okay, So I'm going to just select that. Double, just click on it. We've still got the uh, element UV selected. And we're going to come up to the top here where it says mirror vertically selected sub objects. Okay? And we're just going to click that. And it doesn't look like anything has happened now, but if we go to select again and re repeat that tool, repeat that check, you'll notice that now only the inside polygons are glowing red. And we're not going to flip these. Instead, what we're going to do is relax these two polygons. Okay? Now, I'm sure some of you are looking at this going, especially if you've done this before, well, Rob, why can't you just overlap them and you you can uh, and actually I'd argue that from an optimization point of view and uh, an ease of use point of view later on uh, that's almost definitely a good thing to do especially if you're a, a material uh, artist or a texture artist you're not going to want to do different materials to the top and the bottom but there may be occasions where you do and in that case we are going to have separated top and bottom axes okay and exactly the same thing for each of these individuals each of these individual faces we can just overlap them in uv space paint one material on all of them and then that material will literally be copy and pasted to every face on this crate but just just as you know good practice i'm separating all of these up so that you can have a, a really good go later on in photoshop of copying and pasting those materials editing those materials onto each face and what will happen is that as you become faster at using these tools and faster at texturing and things like that, you'll notice that actually, you know, then it becomes much, much easier. So then you can start popping these things on top of each other. Now, as with the vertices earlier, when I select something, what it should be attached to turns blue. Okay. Now, we know that this particular selection of polygons should be attached to the top of our crate. Okay. We know that for two reasons. One, these edges have turned blue. So we know that that's correct. And if we uh, hold Alt and middle click in our perspective viewport, the top of that box turns red. Process of uh, elimination now tells me that this should be the bottom. And as, as usual, it turns blue. Now, we're going to return to that stitch selector tool. Because what we want to do is attach at least part of this top and bottom section to our uh, cube. Okay, we want, we want these to tile in some way. It doesn't matter which edge you assign these top sections to. But I'm just going to click the top. Uh, if you've done what I've done and you've still got UV elements selected, then uh, just deselect that and just select one edge. Tools, stitch selected, 
And it doesn't matter if it's too big, just click OK. And we're going to do the same for the bottom. We're then going to press Control A after we've clicked on Polygon. And we're going to go to Tools, Relax, and Polygon Angles again, Start Relax. And everything becomes the right size. OK. So the next step, as with the slats, we're going to apply our checker material to our box. OK. And it will become more obvious now where our tiling areas are. So I'm just going to again have a look around here. And can you kind of see where these don't line up? Okay. Now this isn't necessarily an issue, all right? Because what we can do is we can we can account for this if you like in Photoshop. But this happens when this side of the uh, material actually tiles differently to this side. It's 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 going to happen. It doesn't matter. What we're looking for is that for the most part where these are attached, okay? We do have tileable materials here. All right? And that's what we're looking for. So now I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead now. And uh, unhide all. Right click, unhide all. And you'll notice that my slats have got the same material on as my cube. And some of you will notice that the cube has smaller squares, or bigger squares rather, than the slats. This brings me to the next point about using the checker. It's a very good way of ensuring that each part of our object is assigned the same amount of UV space or an amount of UV space that is equal to the, you know, the amount of physical space it takes up. Otherwise, what happens okay, is that we have a higher resolution material here than on our crate. And that's not desirable okay, because any disparity that we have between the materials in our object breaks realism, breaks immersion, etc., etc. The next section is to attach all of these objects together. Okay. Now to do that, we have to go to Edit Poly, but we are not going to go down the stack. Okay. If we change anything in this Edit Poly here, the unwrap completely undoes itself for all of the objects. Okay. And certainly for the object that we have selected. So we're going to add a level of Edit Poly here. Okay. And you'll notice that this becomes a little bit like Photoshop layers. That whatever is on top, kind of. Ha you know, doesn't doesn't necessarily affect what's below. So within this edit poly, I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to come to attach. But instead of clicking uh, the attach button, I'm going to click the, the the box next to attach, and I'm just going to select all of those slats. Press Control A, and I'm going to click attach. I'm then going to come back to my modifier list. Press U, and we're going to add another level of unwrap UVW. Okay, we're going to scroll up. We're going to open that UV editor. And we're going to scroll out. And you'll see that the slats this side and the box this side are now in the same UV editor, UV space. Okay. The next order of business, essentially, is to rescale these uh, objects in UV space. And this is something called rescaling the clusters. Okay. Each one of these is called a cluster um, or a sub-object or anything like that. They're basically, the, you know, they're separate. But 3ds Max has got a, a tool that allows us to do that. So we're going to press Control A, select everything that's there. Okay. We're then going to go to Tools, and we're going to click on Rescale Clusters. And what that's going to do is it's going to rescale my UV so that each of these squares takes up the same amount of space relative to the physical space that my slats take up. Okay. Now you'll notice that as I zoom out here, I have some edge showing here. If you're seeing that, don't worry. Zoom in, okay. If it goes away, you're not actually protruding through. If it doesn't and it stays there, then you're obviously going to have to move your slats about so that it doesn't poke through. Once you've done that, come back to the uh, Edit UVW and we're going to select all of this. And now that this is scaled correctly, when we uniform scale this down, um, it should hopefully uh, stay. That ratio should stay. Now, anything outside of this grid is not going to render. It's not going to be seen. So the task that we now have, which is quite an easy one because our object is quite small, is to just arrange these objects in a way that will enable them to fit in this object or in this box. To do that, we're going to select all. Feel free to uh, you know, move these selections. Uh, for those of you that remember the uh, UV element, feel free to click on that. Now, if I select these individually, um, 
you'll notice I can select the whole things. Now, the way that this has worked, the way the slats have worked, is we've actually unwrapped them all separately. So if I, you can spread all these out. If, if later on you've kind of decided that you want different textures on different slats, feel free to just pull these out and arrange them in a way that allows you to paint on them. But I'm not. I'm going to keep them as they are. I'm going to select the whole object. I'm going to click on the scale tool. And I'm just going to scale this down. Okay. Um, and try, if you can, to resist the urge of rotating this so that it's uh, crossways. If you've done this before uh, and you're okay with Photoshop, you're okay with rotating textures and things like that, um, then feel free to use as much of the UV space as you can. But if you're a beginner, keep it horizontal. Don't worry too much about using all of that space because this is just going to act as almost like a practice. Now, if I click down here, we can, if you want, select the slats, move them up a little bit so that they're occupying their own space. Uh, and you'll scan, zoom out, make sure that the squares are occupying the same space. Now the last section of this tutorial in 3ds Max is going to be rendering this box out. Okay. To do that, we're going to go to Tools. We're going to go to Render UVW Templates. Okay. When we click on this, we get a dialog box. The first option of which allows you to assign a resolution. Now for those of you that have done this before, um, I want you to change the resolution to 512 by 512, okay? Because what this will make you do is really think about optimizing those materials. You're going to have to be very clever about how you apply uh, your textures in Photoshop because you're going to get a lot of pixelation. So you're going to have to use modifiers that essentially negate that, stop that from happening. If you're new, feel free to change this to 2048 by 2048 to 2048 by 2048. What this will do is basically increase uh, the resolution of our create material within 3ds Max and in any game engine. I'm going to keep it as default as 1024 by 1024. But this won't hopefully change anything for you guys. The next step is to click on render UV template. Okay. We will go through uh, the options in the middle uh, in, a further in a future tutorial, um, but for now, we're done with this section. So click Render UVW Template. We should hopefully get, if you're anything like me, your computer is now being a pain in the backside, and is uh, sent that over onto your second screen, which is really causing you issues. So if I just uh, go and grab that now. have to do this carefully. It's literally just sent this. There we go. Okay, so this is hopefully what it should look like. All right. Now, if you've done it in 2048 by 2048, your box is probably going to look something like this. All right, you're not going to see all the edges. But don't worry. I'm going to move this down so you can see it. But don't worry. If we zoom in, all your edges will be there. When you op open this in Photoshop, okay, all your edges will be there. So just have faith. If you see this, it's just a, it's just a memory-saving... Um, facility in 3ds Max. The next step is to click on the floppy disk or the save image icon and we're going to navigate to our pictures folder. We're going to come into, uh, we'll create a new folder actually and we're going to call this uh, create tutorial and I'm going to double click in there and I'm going to save this as crate underscore UVW. And I'm going to click save. But before I do that, I need to assign a format. Okay, I'm going to click bitmap. And I'm just going to save. You can select pretty much any of these. Bitmap, work, JPEG, again, it's fine. But we're going to use bitmap. And we're just going to click save. Click OK. And then we're going to close these off. Okay, and that pretty much ends... Uh, this section of the tutorial in 3ds Max. Okay, the next uh, tutorial series is going to be in Photoshop, and what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at putting materials onto this crate. I'm going to look at. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to the UI in Photoshop, and we're also going to look at some basic tools.